In this video, you are going to be seeing filthy stingers, massive drives and some fantastic golf shots. But more importantly, you're going to be finding out what you can do at the driving range to improve at golf. And what's better, it's all within a 60 minute session. So I've left home, come about 30 minutes down the road to the Beaches driving range, which I think has pretty much all the essentials that you need for a good practice session. It's got really good balls, the mats are nice, and it's a beautiful floodlit evening here. It's slightly chilly in the northwest of the UK, but it also has some features, which if you can find, are absolutely fantastic. So it's got ball tracking software, you can have all the feedback and the data that you need. Also, it has fantastic coffee, which is probably an essential as well. Now, the first top tip of this video is that practice is nothing without feedback. That is something you have to remember. Don't judge a practice session by how long you spend at a driving range. I've got 100 balls here. That's going to last me 60 minutes. I might not even get through them all. Remember, the amount of time that you spend at a range does not guarantee you're going to be a better golfer. It's the quality of the practice that you do whilst you're here. Test that. That is a robot ball picker, ladies and gentlemen. About to come in here and take over by the, by the looks of it. It's hungry. First thing we want to be doing is the warm up. Now, if I'm going to be honest, it would be fantastic if you had the ability to do some dynamic stretching before you even got to the driving range. Even use a massage gun something like that it'll make you more supple and more able to try and make the swing changes and moves that you want but i am very well aware <laughs> that a lot of you won't do that so what we're going to have is a warm-up that everybody can do but it's going to take 30 of your practice balls oh god I put this down. <laughs> so the first 20 balls just pick your wedges and we're going to be focusing on targets between 50 and 100 yards. Now you can see here at the beaches, we've got a lot of different options at those distances. All I'm going to be doing is switching between the wedges and just hitting shots to each of those targets. So I'm not overexerting myself with these shots, but here's the key and here's something which won't draw the stares of any of your fellow practicers. Once you've hit a shot, super, super simple. Pop the club across your chest turn away turn towards the target just feel those joints creaking and then just add a little bit of a toe tap if you can't reach it's absolutely fine but what this does it gives you a dynamic stretch you can do it in between shots and no one's gonna laugh at you us brits are a, are a weird bunch aren't we we'll do anything just not to draw attention to ourselves <laughs> So the last 10 balls of the warm-up, really easy. Just gonna move up the irons. So we're gonna go from the nine iron to the driver and probably hit the driver twice. I'm not really aiming at a particular target. I'm just aiming with the mat here. But all I wanna try and establish is a nice rhythm for the rest of the range session. I'm not trying to hit it too hard. I'm just extending the swing. Just trying to feel that looseness and then work all the way up to the driver. Remember, we are very much still in warm-up mode. I am sponsored by Footjoy, but they've done an unreal job with this top. It's like a fleecy lined one. Absolutely roasting. <laughs> I am warmed up. It is time 
for the main practice. Now at the driving range, I will try and combine two types of practice, fixed and varied. Fixed practice is the repetition, the practice you're probably most familiar with. Varied practice is going to different targets and it means it's more like an actual game situation. Because if you just do fixed practice and you just hit ball after ball after ball, that's not what it's gonna be like once you get to the golf course. I'm just going to the loo, that's okay. Now varied practice, we'll get onto this a little bit more, but if you can get to a range which has data-driven technology, so this is a Trackman range, you can have a Foresight range, you can have a Top Tracer range, all these different ranges give you the ability to track your scores, to play games, it makes your practice so much better, trust me, rather than just hitting ball after ball after ball. Such a good coffee. Honestly, I recommend a cappuccino. And yes, if there are any Italians watching, it is at night and I did have a cappuccino, I apologize. But I don't, I don't apologize because it was great. A very important question you want to be asking yourself is, why are you here? Seriously, why are you here? If you're going to be here just to clip a few balls away, that's fine. But if not, you've got to have a purpose. What are you trying to change in your swing? What differences do you want to see in your ball fight? If you can have a lesson, amazing. It gives you something really concrete to work on. If not, check out the Swing Quest channel. You've got all the information you need on pretty much every part of the swing. Now, I never go anywhere without this, probably because it's kind of part of my job, but also because it's very useful to be filming your swing. Remember, feedback. You want feedback. The golf swing is incredibly difficult to actually feel if you are making the change you want to. The difference between feel and real within the golf swing is very well documented. So the only way to be able to tell is to actually use a camera, use video and see, because what you feel you're doing, you might not be doing in reality. Now, when you're undertaking fixed practice, I like to use a training gauge, something specific to what you are working on. This is a swing plate, not sponsored video. I picked this up off the guy who actually made it. You can just stick an alignment stick in the ground, obviously at a range like this. I can't stick it in the carpet. I can check this out, by the way. You go fishing with that. Now, what I'm trying to do within my swing is not get so steep. So I'm using this as a bit of a guide to what I want my swing plane to actually be. And then I can use the video on my phone to check what I'm actually doing in relation to the shaft angle. But this is me and my game. I'm not saying you should be using this on the driving range. I'm using this because I want to see the correlation between my shaft angle and what's happening in my swing. So this is the fixed part of the practice. So I'm gonna take an aim down here. We've got a bit of a fairway in between these flags on the left and the yardage markers on the right. And as long as my ball is finishing in between them, I'm gonna be okay. Remember, this is about swing feelings, about swing changes. I wanna associate it to the target but we are not on the very part of practice just yet. So I've set aside 40 balls. I'm gonna go up and down my clubs, adjusting the training gate when I need to. Let's grind. Now, varied practice can come in many forms. A popular one, let's say down here at the range, I would play through the first at Reddish Vale in my head. So like a long iron off the tee and iron into the green, obviously couldn't put here, but I'd move on to the second hole and carry on. I could also vary my target. So could it a wedge there, a seven iron to that one over there, a five iron, just to keep it mixed up. What you don't wanna be getting into the habit of after your fixed practice is just to stay in the same routine, hitting ball after ball after ball. One of the keys to varied practice is a change in environment. Now, obviously we're not gonna be able to move off this mat to get different lies. However, what we can do is vary up tee shots. So what I'm gonna use here, I'm gonna use the software 
I'm gonna go on course practice and I am gonna be really focused on the tee shots. So I've got my drive and my three wood, my driving iron and my four iron. Four clubs which I will use off a tee. Where shall, where shall we go? No, shall we? Let's go back to Adair. I'll tell you what, we'll go to the 18th of Adair. Here's an actual tee shot off the 18th of Adair. And let's go, I tell you, this is good, isn't it? Yeah, this is. No freaking way. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change my club on every shot, but I'm also gonna change up the ball flight I'm trying to play. So a driver, I'll hit a high fade. Four iron, a low draw. No two shots will be the same. I've got 30 balls to get through, so lots of different types of shot, but the best thing with the software is I can actually track where they're all going. If this was a range without the data, I could just mark them down on my phone, on a pad, as long as I have that feedback. Because what I want to be able to see is if my fixed practice has had any effect on my varied practice. Because this is the step in between your swing changes and the course. I mean, what I've been trying to work on is a bit more of a high draw. So that's what we'll do first. I'll let you decide first, Kira. What club? Oh, I've got the driver. I've got the driver. God, change the record. <laughs> yeah. High draw. That feeling of being a bit more rounded. Oh, I mean, it's very, very straight. Well, I can officially say that is the best drive that I've ever hit on the 18th at Dare Manor. 336 yards, ball speed 175. It's quite impressive tonight. Went pretty straight, did it? Not, not a lot of draw on there. Okay, so let's say my next club would be a four iron off the tee. And let's try and play a high cut. It's really good if you have someone with you as well. It's like the call out the shot, so it's not you deciding, keeps you honest. So high cut, I'm gonna to have to start this over the River Liffey. You can see, just imagine it out there, the river down the left, the manor house in the background. Bunker off to the, oh, I can see it. So high fade with a four. It's pretty good. Come on, cut. Keep cutting, keep cutting. Keep cutting. <laughs> That's in with the fishes, mate. So a high cut four to a stinger. Oh, stinger too, I right? pretty straight. Oh. I did button that. It maybe rose a touch more than I wanted, but that was pure. So again, now it'll be three wood and then I'd recycle everything and do different shots. And I'm still trying to get the feeling that I was having within my fixed practice. But now there's something on it. Now there's something tangible to actually judge it by. Oh, the seventh, that's horrible. Well, that wall, yeah, let's go seven, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be right over the goal. Three wood. I draw, all right. Mamma mia! I'll remember that for a long time. Added into this, we wanted to go through like the whole pre-shot routine and really get that nailed down. Depends what you're working on. But let's get through the last of these 30 balls, go into different targets, different flights, different shots. So my varied practice there was actually pretty good. 20 out of 30 fairways with the variation of clubs on any day, I would be absolutely delighted with that. It depends how organized and structured you are with your practice, because ideally you would repeat this game. You would play it again and again and again and see if you could make any improvements. But if you're not that structured, it's okay. Don't worry too much. It's a varied practice and it's the competitive side of practice, putting pressure on yourself. That's what really matters. Guys, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. Also, check out Swing Quest here. And how about this video on how to improve your driving that little bit more?